Right, let's look at some key moments from last year's final. This was a huge shot for you, Joe. You're 4-1 down, and there's a massive difference between, of course, 4-2 and 5-1. You've got to pot the black here, and you're trying to knock that red off the cushion just above the pink, which is a fantastic shot. Mm. Not only have you knocked it off, it's now in open play, and you plumb on the red in the middle. Now, I've seen this a few times, and I think you get a slight kick, because obviously you miss it. Why did you miss it? Do you remember the shot? Do you remember the miss? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, it, was, it was slightly straight. So I tried to pinch some of the pocket to come down, and obviously I just ended up taking my off it. Also, it was such a big, big point in the match where I felt if I nicked that one, I could sort of hurt Ronnie a little bit and then get back into it from there. Um, obviously, if he gets this frame, he's 5-1 up. I can't possibly get a lead in the first session. He can kind of just relax and build up a really big lead, so... This is one of my favourite shots from the final. Everyone has played this shot in, in, the, in the club and never ever thought about doing what you did which was moving the black off the cushion. Mm. I think that was a fantastic job. Yeah, well, yeah, I needed to get the black out because obviously it was so tight to the cushion. So, um, yeah, it turned out all right. <laughs> it turned out all right. I've never heard you say it was fantastic. <laughs> Have you ever done that about any of your shots? Uh, there's been a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, that, Not many that later, green though. potted. Double kiss there. Never good, but it, it doesn't really matter because you're, you're leading. It just gives Ronnie maybe a better chance to get that snooker. No, it's not easy to get a snooker on the black here either because it's sort of, if the black's on the black spot, you know, you can normally get, you've got a good chance of getting it in behind there, but where it is there, it's pretty, it's in the middle of the table, so. Six and five. It's such an important frame as well for you to win the last one in the afternoon, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was a, a, a massive frame really to try and stay in the match. Let's skip forward now to 9-4, of course, Ronnie leading, just needing one more. I've got the impression, Ronnie, in this one that you just thought, it, it's close, there's a couple of reds there, I'm just going to try well, and go for it, is well, that it's right? Not, it's not an easy shot there, because obviously, you know, I've, I've hit that a bit too thick on the red. Um, but like I said, you know, there was, a, I mean, I don't know if Judd felt, but I just felt at some point in this match, Judd had kind of give up in his mind, I could just tell on his body and his mannerisms that he'd had such a bad day at the office that he kind of felt like, you know what, whatever I'd done, we went wrong. Look, even when he misses, I could just tell, look, I just thought he's just... What he feels like he just wants to get out of there. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. But like, look, you know, I'm sitting there looking at that thinking... You are, know, are you nine, aware of that? If thing? he's 9-4 up doing that, I'm thinking, you know, well, you know, he's obviously concentrating. But when you're 9-4 down and you're doing that, you can obviously see that your opponent's not, not having a good time out there. So it was kind of more surprising for me that, you know, he, he could turn it around so well, which is obviously a testament to his temperament, really. Uh, that one made it 9-5. When do you start thinking, I've got a chance here? Um, I'm just waiting to try and one visit now. If, if I can one visit, get, get a bit of momentum, then I know that I, I can sort of think about not missing. But whereas I've not cleared up in, in one visit yet, all I'm doing is when I'm getting to the table is looking for problems. And um, in, in the end, uh, I make a good break out of nowhere, really, and sort of that's what gets me back into the game, gets me... Um, sort of geared back up to the next round. At the table now, Judd, 9-8 down. Uh, chance of a long red. And you spoke earlier on about you just want to have that one visit and clear up. And uh, just slightly off with the long one there. What's going through your mind now? That was my chance or still a long way to go? Um, as I was coming to the table, I was obviously thinking I've gone from not being able to pot a ball to, to not missing a ball. So I'm thinking that I'm going to get down on one clear up again one visit and then when I've left him this this red on I was thinking that's the only thing I didn't want to do was leave him sort of an, an easy chance to get over the line and um, as soon as he got into like 20 he opens the ball so so well you, you're thinking it's, it's all over um, but, but at least I put up a, a good shot I started to play well so I wasn't too disappointed compared to if I'd have lost 10-4 um, I sort of sat there like it's a bit embarrassing. Now, let's have a look at another key shot. This is uh, you down on the black, and obviously you're trying to avoid the red. That's yeah, just I think to your this right. is the one where I should have took the pink. I think I, should, I think I, I think I'd have shot in the pink in the middle, but I wasn't confident of potting it and stunning across. So yeah. I end up trying to play the black to get behind the red. So you're going to try and come off the cushion and back round for the red. In the yeah, other yeah I was trying to miss the red, um, but I've, I've, oh, I've not thinking, hit it well. Aye, aye, his bottle's gone. <laughs> I'm thinking that no, just, just. Hopefully, please get one more chance. And where I'm thinking where the balls are, there's not really that much 
that much safe so that I can pop one good ball if he leaves me half a chance and I've got to go for it really and, and try and get back into it. I mean, that's a big lead, 9-8, first to 10, and 59 up. Well, it is a big lead, but when he's been knocking four frames on the bounce in one visit, it's not a big lead. You just think it's just one pot. I'm not thinking, oh, he's got to get six reds, six colours and all the colours. I'm thinking if he gets half a chance, he's probably going to clear up. Oh, he's probably good safety there while the reds come back with you. That's Which actually a bad safety. Got away of it. I got away with it there, but I remember Judd putting this red. I remember coming back to my chair thinking, I've got away with that. But then I'm thinking, well, I haven't, because if he pots this red, he's bang on the black. Mm. And then I'm thinking, there's a red on the left-hand side of the cushion, which is my only saviour. Um, but if, if he misses this, he loses the final. Mm. It, it's just what I'm thinking, and bang, it goes straight in the middle. That must go through your mind as well, Judd, when you're down on that red. This is it, uh, if I miss it, I've lost. Yeah, I, I knew I, I'd have lost if that didn't go in, and... Uh, also, the way <laughs> the way I'm queuing, like banging in front of Ronnie's chair, I'm scared of. I don't want to see my arm twitch in front of him. I don't want him to watch me twitch it, so I'm thinking, just queue it straight, please. That's going through your mind. I don't want to make a fool of myself in front of my. I don't, I don't want to twitch. Like I don't. I don't want to like, yeah. miss it by a mile right in front of his chair. So I, it, yeah, that's kind of <laughs> kind of what I thought, and um, I knew if I potted that, then I was gonna have a good chance. So I was feeling so confident at the time. Um, I didn't think I was going to miss from there. And of course you went on to win that frame 9-9. Nine, nine. Pressure's on who? Pressure's not on Ronnie. It's, it's still on you, Ron. So it's been on you from really 9-4, isn't it? From 9-4. No, five, no yeah. pressure whatsoever on Judd. It's right. All the way he's coming back to 9-6, 9-7, 9-8 and even 9-9. Yeah, 9-5, nine, 9-6, nine, I was like, yeah. Because obviously it was mine to lose and, you know, Judd had, had everything to gain in because no one expected him to win from there. With all that pressure on you, you've pulled out, you know, an incredible long red. Yeah, I remember just thinking, right, well, it's nine all. You've got nowhere. There's nowhere to go now. It's, 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 you know, it's all on this frame. And I remember, fan I fancied that to be honest with you. I thought I felt pretty good on that one, and um, kind of on the black. You thinking maximum? No. <laughs> she can get a twenty or thirty. And what are you thinking, Jack? Because he's just produced a fantastic red. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it wasn't a bad break off. I'm, a, I'm a little bit annoyed. <laughs> I'm thinking, how has he potted that after what go. I've just done, and then. I'm thinking that he's pretty much, he's, he's two inches there, two inches too high from frame being over. If he, if he pots that finish, his low flicks the two reds away, I'm thinking it's this game over from there. Mm. So he still had a little bit to do. This obviously was a massive turning point, I don't know if you remember, but you, you pushed yeah. the red up the table slightly round the, to the middle. Yeah. Of the, 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 where the blue is and the white just behind the green. It was a fantastic shot. Your safety actually in this final one is very good. It was such a hard position at that point. I'm just thinking about just maybe just smashing the balls and hoping for the best. It was it was that hard at the point. I knew at this point if I left anything, then I'm probably not getting back to the table. So you're going for what the, the furthest to the left that red? I'm trying to hit the the top red here on the left hand side. Okay. Dead weight though. And then just to flip to the left of that. And the cushion just reacted a little bit square than I thought it was going to. You thinking just get a decent score, or I can win Sorry. the match from here? I know, I'm, I'm thinking, I want, you know, I've got, I've got to go game here. If I don't go game here, then, um, you know, especially in the frame before when I was 60 in front, I'm thinking I, I don't deserve to win. I knew if I built up enough lead with reds and pinks that there was a good chance I wasn't going to need to, to, to get them two reds. Well done, Ronnie. Just the one in front of the match. Well, what you said, Joe? Okay. Well, you can, don't I you? can't remember. No, I didn't remember that judge. I, remember, but I think we both had an horrendous day, but I said, like, oh, I'd never want to go through that again or something like that. Yeah, I can't remember. Like that, yeah. What did you say, Judd? Just a congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. Give me half your money, please. <laughs> <laughs> Same feeling when you win it now as when you won it as a kid? No, different, different feeling. Um, I think you're much more aware of the process now. When I was first coming on the scene, I was just kind of just smashing everything in and just loving it, you know, whereas now you kind of look. I think the older you get, the more you start to appreciate that, you know, you might not be playing in as many as these matches. You take it for granted when you first come on because you think, well, you know, it's just another tournament. But I've actually learned that, you know, and if it's one bit of thing I'd, I'd obviously say to someone, is just appreciate every result you get and every win because one day you're going to, you, you know, you're not going to be able to get it, you know, like Davis and Hendry. And people like that, it happens to everyone, you know, you can't, you're not always going to be able to win tournaments. That six world title, will it happen? <laughs> you never know. Who knows, you know, um, 
I'd, I'd, I'd love to think that I've got another one in me. Judd, this season, your aims, your views, is it to get that World Championship? Is that the main goal? To me, goal? Um, my, my, my main two goals this year are that the, the Masters I've never really done well in. I want to do well in that one. And uh, the World Championship sooner rather than later, I want to sort of get to the final again and win, hopefully. OK, lads, uh, thank you for your time today. It's been a real pleasure and hopefully we'll see you both in many more major finals. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up after the break, Ronnie gives us a masterclass on how to make that magical maximum break. Plus, the rocket puts Karen Wilson through his paces in a brand new snooker challenge. There ain't many things better than making a 147 at snooker, and today I'm going to be showing you how I would go about making that magical 147 break. This is a type of opportunity that when it presents itself, the first thing that comes to mind is a 147. You've got maybe six, seven, eight reds out in the open. The black is not tied up, so there's no excuse for not being able to get a red, black, red, black. So we have a simple red to start off with. And each ball that I part will be played with a stun screw or a run-through shot. I've screwed back along this line here to try and leave myself a perfect angle to either just follow through or ideally I would have liked to have been here. But the whole point of making a 147 is always trying to leave yourself options. A bit of screw and a little bit of side to bring me over towards the black. Now I'm going to play a slight little run through. Trying to always leave myself an angle on the black. You don't ever really want to get straight on the black because all you can do is go forwards and backwards if you're straight. There you go, straight in the middle. A lot of people always ask me how many shots I'm thinking ahead and in this instance I'm thinking I want to clear this red, get onto the black to get on this red. So three shots ahead here. And I've got on the black perfect. I'm using that red as a blocker to stay on the black. And this is where I've made a mistake. I've tied this red up. I've now got this plant in the middle, which should free up a couple of these reds. Got a slight angle on the black, which is going to take my white out to here. And we're going to play for this red in this corner. I've left myself a slight angle on this red here, so I can either stun it in or I can just run it through and play a little cannon off of this, which will open these two up. So I think I'm going to play the little cannon shot. Oh, got through the gap. I've got myself a tough shot on this red. I've managed to pot that one. And it's vitally important to get an angle on this black now to dislodge these two reds because it's a potable position. It's come out perfect. Oh, left myself a bit of an angle there. Too much of an angle. So what I might have to do here is screw into here, try and flip this red over the corner. Screw in on the floor, and you can't play it any better than that. I've managed to pot 14 reds, 14 blacks. I've now got the perfect opportunity to pot this red, get myself on the black. Now, the difficult shot here is leaving myself the right angle on the black to get to the yellow. But at this point, adrenaline is taking over, so you're thinking, I've just got to trust my ability now. And now I'm going to run through a sequence of how I'd normally pot the colours. So here we have the yellow. A lot of the shots that I've been talking about all through this break have been little soft stun screws, so it's very important you start to try and perfect that shot. But again, a little soft screw to try and leave yourself a nice angle on the brown to take ourselves from blue to pink. It's very important we stay this side of the blue. If we come round here, then it means we've got to go all the way around the table. And again, you want to leave yourself just below 
About there is OK. So now I'm feeling really confident. I feel like I'm, I'm probably just one shot away now from actually making a 147. And that's the shot. Now you can't foul. Nice and firm. Straight through the ball. In it goes. And there you go. A 147. It's been a big year for Karen Wilson. The 23-year-old shocked the snooker world two months ago, winning the Shanghai Masters, beating the likes of Joe Perry, Bing Jun Wee, and Mark Allen, before downing Judd Trump 10-9 in the final. Ranked world number 54 at the time, Wilson also became the lowest-ranked player to win a ranking title since 2005. Ronnie went to meet Snooker's newest star at his club in Kettering. So this is where you practice. I know that used to be your table, but now you've got, kind of gone to the private room over there. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's obviously a very busy club, and it was just nice to sort of get away and um, concentrate on my own, yeah. and sort of get out of the busy environment. And how long have you been practicing there? Um, oh, five years. Five years. Um, originally, I was playing in the club in Kettering, but. These have took me under my wing and, yeah, they've been great to me. And who do you practice with here? You got any good players that you can play yeah, with? Yeah, I, I currently share a table with Peter Ebden. Um, I have a few players down, Rory McLeod, um, Mark Joyce. So I've got, yeah, I'm in a good little good little spot for practice partners. Yeah, nice, brilliant. We've got some challenges for you today. I've set up a few different kind of different exercises, so shall we see how we get on? Yeah, let's do it, yeah. Yeah? In your opinion, who do you think the snooker plays good safety? It's obviously a massive part of the game. Um, I think if you're going to be a top player, you've got to have a good safety game. Probably the one that springs to mind is probably the most recent winner, John Higgins. Yeah. Um, his safety games on really puts you in positions that a lot of players could, could never put you in. So, yeah, I'd probably say John Higgins is the best. OK. All right, well, we're going to see how good mine and your safety is today. OK. Mine ain't been too good lately, so... No. I don't know about yours. But yours <laughs> has been a lot better, because obviously you've done well in Shane. Like, so you yeah. must have been playing some good stuff out there. Got three reds up there, so I'm going to give. We're both going to have three attempts each, and the idea is is to try and for every colour you can hit, you get ten points. Right. Right. So I'm going to have my first three attempts. Shoot. On the way. It's close. Oh, give me ten. Oh, I missed it. Let's get there. One out of three. Ten points. Sure. I'm happy with one out of three, so I've got ten points. You'll go. I'll Good be luck. happy with one out of three, to be honest. Good luck, does it? I've seen your safety, you're a good safety player, so I'll let you to get two I'm happy with this if it reaches. Aye, aye. Go on. First go. Oh. Ten points. Oh, it's turned. It's turned away, that nice. It's turned back in, yes. Green. Two out of three, I'm, 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 I expected that, really. Yeah, thanks very you much. happy with that? Yeah, very happy, yeah. yeah. Ten behind. This is about long ball potting, so I set up three different types of long ball here. I went first on the safeties, so I'm going to make you go first on okay. the long ones. Pressure's on. Oh, yeah. Clean as a whistle. Oh, three out of three. Happy with that. Talking about long ball potting, who would you say in the game? And when I say the modern era, I'm probably going back to when. So Dave is coming to the game, so around the 1980s. Mm -hmm. Who would you say over them years was probably the best long ball potter that you've seen in the game? You, you've got to say Judd Trump, I suppose, as, as the top top long potter. Um, you've got Murphy, Robertson. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Alex Higgins as well. You know, he potted some outrageous long balls. At the moment, you've got 50 out of 60. I've got 10 out of 30, so the pressure's on me now. Two out of three. Ain't bad. I want to know who you think is uh, the top rest player in the game. The first one that comes to mind is probably Jimmy. Yeah. He's obviously very natural talent. Um, and yeah, I think growing up from a young age, you, you learn to use the rest because of your height, obviously. 
but a close one, I'd probably say Sean Murphy. I think it's my turn to go first. Mm -hmm. So we've got two rest shots here, one down either side. Yep. The challenge, you hit the magical 100, 100 mark. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I just want to say well done, obviously, in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. And there's a really nice story. I remember Peter Ebden coming up to me about seven, seven years ago, it must have been, he said to me, he said, I've seen a new guy. His name's Kieran Wilson. He said, I've been practicing. He said, he's going to win tournaments. And I was like, really? He went, yeah, 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 trust me. And uh, you kind of, you, I see you come on the scene. I see you've, you know, you've had a few results. And then to kind of see you make that breakthrough at Shanghai, you know, um, I know Peter knows his game and he, and he spotted, he, he was right on this occasion and he was right with Ding as well. So, mm, you know, um, I know everyone might have only just seen you, but amongst the snooker world, you're highly respected amongst the players and uh, you've got all it takes really to, to go all the way. So, thanks very much. I've had a great day. Cheers, Ronnie. Thanks for having Thank me, Dan. Cheers. And, uh, good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks, mate. Cheers. The season. Thanks, mate. Cheers.